We'll call the uh, Prattville City Council meeting to order. If you'll rise, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, followed by the invocation tonight given by Councillor Denise Brown. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Join me in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this opportunity to gather together tonight to do the business of this city. We thank you for each person that's here tonight, each employee, each citizen. We thank you for all the blessings, Lord, that you give to us. We pray for wisdom tonight, Lord, as we go forward, and we pray that you will watch over those that can't be with us tonight. Thank you for all the many blessings, Lord. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Councillor Stripling? Here. Councillor Wood? Here. Councillor Brown? Here. Councillor Miller? Councillor Reniger? Here. Councillor Bowles? Here. Councillor Fank? Here. The character trait of the month is decisiveness, the ability to recognize key facts and finalize difficult decisions. Fellow councillors, uh, you have received copies of the minutes from the City Council meeting and public hearing of July 3rd, 2012. Are there any uh, adjustments, amendments, or changes in the minutes? Seeing no hands, the Chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I hear a motion. So moved. Moved by Councillor Fink. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councillor Bowes. All, all those in favor of approval of the minutes signify by raising your right hand. Any opposition by like sign seeing none, the minutes are approved. This time we'll open the uh, floor up for comments from the public pertaining to agenda items only. If you have a question or a comment pertaining to an agenda item tonight, please raise your hand and we will recognize you. Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to the mayor's report. Do you have a brief report for us tonight, Mayor? <laughs> Since we're always waiting on, on me, I'll wait on Tom Miller this time, Dr. Tom Miller, for just a moment. So he can get his stopwatch ready. Yes, sir. To make this report just as quick and painless as possible, uh, the qualification period for our candidates for mayor and city council closed at 5 o'clock today. A complete list of the candidates is available on our city website, so anybody who's interested can get on there, please. Um, I want to compliment the ca candidates uh, you know, for stepping up to the plate uh, as we go through this election process, uh, you know, especially at this grassroots level. It's... Um, a lot different than I'm certain is the national level where they level where they have the big buses that are air conditioned and they go to different venues that are usually a lot of food around or and usually air conditioned and around here it's beating the the, the asphalt streets and and uh, I'm certain each and every one of us will lose anywhere from five to twenty pounds or so but uh, please be careful as we do go through this process of uh, uh, running for these elected offices. The election uh, will be held on August the 28th. Uh, if there's a necessary a runoff, uh, that will be October the 9th. Um, to move further on along, I just want to uh, compliment uh, everybody for a 4th of July. Uh, I think it was a great success. The parade with our Korean War veterans, the Lions Club uh, cookout, uh, the special events that Kelly Cook arranged with the help from, I believe, all the environmental, from all our departments, environmental services, public safety, uh, urban management, leisure services department. They, they did just a great job, and I want to uh, uh, say thank you to all, each and every one of them because without them, uh, the birthday of our nation would not have been quite as grandeur as, um, as it was, I think. Um, and I might have been a little, <clears throat> excuse me, a little biased, um, but I think it was the best, best 4th of July. I do know that it was the biggest number of people we had in the parks uh, this 4th of July. Some of that was because of the 
the city city staff, uh, but then also the uh, the committee that was pulled together that Council President Renegar you sat on, which was our Fourth uh, of July committee, and uh, it was a great success uh, because of you and other ones like yourself sitting up there. Uh, we were able to pull together all the funding that it needed, and um, that portion of the Fourth of July celebration was not funded by the city itself, not funded by taxpayer dollars. So that, that has really helped out a lot. And I think it means a lot more when, when you stand out there and, and um, realize that you really had a bigger part into the fireworks than just pulling up there and watching it. At least it was for me. But uh, also to move further on along, uh, after the success of our recent grant contest, it uh, become apparent to me that we needed a core group to look uh, for these types of grant programs. I charged Teresa Lee with creating a No Excuses, Just Re Results group on Facebook. Uh, we have pulled together several individuals and also representatives from the Human, Humane Shelter, the library, the group whose main focus is to find these grants and, and or contests for the betterment of the city of Prattville. Uh, at this point in time, they've uh, identified the next challenge, which is a shelter challenge. And uh, it's a challenge that uh, is both has two levels on it. One's the state level, one's the national level, and it goes through September the 16th. And if you win the national level, it's a $5,000 grant. So I know especially in the difficult times that um, everybody has been in where budgets have had, had to be trimmed, uh, um, I think this $5,000, if the Humane Shelter happens to, to win it, I think it will be a very good blessing for them because they do provide a very big service for us because at one point in time, uh, if, if everybody sitting up here remembers, we used to have a dog pound, and uh, I don't know of anybody who wants to go back to that type of service and uh, we are uh, pretty much mandated by the state to help out with this uh, humane shelter so I, I hope that they hope everybody will get involved with it it's a once a day vote on it and um, it's um, right now they're in 12th place nationally whenever they started looking at this we we're in 955th place we're 12th place now uh, the on the Facebook it's grants for PAHS. We should also have some grant reports uh, in some other areas in the very near future because we made a, a couple of phone calls today about some potential grants, and um, I see quite a few more grants coming for us in the very near future. You know, it's a great opportunity to find ways for our projects through these community in initiatives while continuing to build and solidify these relationships. This is a great way to help extend taxpayer dollars during the, this economic hardship we have experienced over the last, uh, through this last few budget cycles. But on one point of good news, I'd like to talk a little bit about the PSL swim, swim team, the Prattville Swim League. Uh, the swim team took first place this weekend in district finals and uh, moves on to the state. They had a total of over 2,200 points, which um, put them into the into the state region there. But on a little bit more of a, I guess, a personal note for that for that team, Coach Joe Reynolds, his daughter, uh, she qualified to compete for a spot on the U.S. Olympic team. Uh, she made a great show in there, and we also be very proud of her because she actually helped uh, carry the Prattville banner to that event. She did not make it to the Olympic team, but she did did very very well. Uh, August the 7th is our national night out. You'll be hearing a little bit more about that uh, in the very near future. It's an um, event sponsored by Target, which it's, uh, it's a national event. But anyway, it just showcases all of our public safety, uh, multi-agencies, uh, possible even multi-jurisdicts showing um, uh, up there in August in the Target parking lot August the 7th. Then also tentative for September, there will be another similar uh, function like that, uh, possibly in the Kmart parking lot and even possibly one downtown. Another uh, item I want to bring to your attention is that uh, is our neighborhood watch. It, um, it got started uh, here in Prattville several years ago, and I'm looking into revitalizing it. Uh, it's been a dormant program for a while, and um, you'll also have some different uh, reports on that in the very near future, so expect some, uh, especially coming through your department. Uh, through your committee, Councilor Woods. A little bit of a brighter news, our Way Off Broadway Theater has a new production coming on July the 26th. It's called Patio Porch. It's a two-in-one act, which has a 
beginning to uh, being compared to the fried green tomatoes. Uh, I've got a little flyer here that you'll see posted out, and they'll also be mailing out some postcard size. So hopefully I'll be able to see each and every one of you guys there. It's, you can check with Kelly Cook on that. It runs uh, until August the 12th. And uh, I know I, every, each and every one of these I've gone to, I've really have enjoyed them. So I hope to see you guys there. It's just one way that we're probably trying to build up its um, quality of life products um, program. So if you can uh, put that on your calendar, I know we all would appreciate it. One other one is uh, the Founders Day. We have a reef laying uh, ceremony on Friday, July the 20th, 9, uh, 9 a.m. at Pratt Cemetery. Uh, there will also be a reception after that at the Pratt Aga Museum across the street over here. But please join me in honoring Daniel Pratt on his birthday if, if you do find that possible. I've also tasked Drew Peterson with pulling together a sports committee. Uh, it's one way for us to see exactly what direction that all of our parks and recs or um, meets the needs and the wants of our community. And um, I think this last season, they had a real good season in both baseball, softball, and soccer. And uh, But the uh, Leisure Services Committee will be hearing more about that. Uh, that should be pulled together in the very near, near future. And I'll be giving some updates on that also. July 31st, tentatively, is going to be the date uh, for our depart department budget hearings. Uh, should be here in this chamber as of right now that is tentative. I uh, will be having the time and the exact location on that. I hope that uh, each and every one of you guys can show up for that if you're available. It's just going to be a new little process of trying to uh, invite the community, the citizens out to, to see what processes that we go through, that the mayor goes through in developing the budget. Um, this, you guys are invited as a guest there. Um, if you do have questions, I feel like we should be able to have some of those answered. But uh, I do plan on having a budget presented uh, to this body um, uh, late August. So that would be something for you to look forward to. On the agenda, the authorizing the hiring of the firefighter, uh, that is something that really ask that you move forward on tonight. That is uh, a needed replacement there. There's, um, and there's also a possibility that we might have to come back before you in the near future for a, another request like this. But at this point in time, <clears throat> it is not needed, but it, there might be a, a need in the future. Besides that, I'm open to any questions, comments, concerns? Any questions for the mayor? Councilor Bowles? Uh, yes, sir. It came to my attention today that you received a certificate of some sort. Can you explain that to me? Well, I uh, finally found enough time to uh, attend enough classes to get my cer certified municipal officer uh, certificate, and um, which I had probably acquired, I'm going to do a little bit of guessing here, I would probably acquired somewhere around 12 hours or so the first uh, two years that I was on the council and then I, that fell off of my radar so to speak. But as stepping in as mayor I saw that uh, there was a need for that and so I, all the classes that I went to I paid for out of my pocket. But yes sir, they informed, informed me that I did uh, com complete my 40 hours that I needed to so I'll be getting that. Uh, certificate in the very near future. Well, congratulations. I know that's a lot of time and a lot of effort. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for the mayor? Thank you, Mayor. I was really expecting somebody to say something about a splash pad, but if nobody wants to talk about it, I'll go sit down. Well, we kind of figured that that would be your thunder for the end of the meeting, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Councilor Miller. Since you mentioned it, can you update us on the splash pad? <laughs> well, only because you asked. Um, at last count, the um, city of Prattville was about 7 million votes ahead. Uh, of course, they do have to do an audit, and they are working through those audits. And um, as of right now, they do not have a date uh, to, to have an announcement on that. But um, we... Um, 
there's probably a pretty good chance we're going we're going to end up winning that Coca-Cola, uh, America's favorite park, hundred thousand dollars. So we, we will definitely keep you guys informed. I think it was a very energizing uh, promotional contest that I think everybody enjoyed because some of the last reports is that they had votes from all 50 states. I think Prattville uh, raised itself up to national level there for just a moment and it never hurts to get a lot of free publicity. Uh, I don't know if, if that had anything to do with all the people that I saw in the park uh, just recently, but there's a lot of people in the park, uh, several canoes, uh, kayaks, uh, tubing. So anyway, there's been a lot of, lot of activity in Pratt Park and the surrounding little areas there over the last uh, several weeks. So it, um, I think the community enjoyed it, um, not just the city of Prattville community, but the state of Alabama community. I think we really enjoyed it because I had several phone calls um, uh, from around the state um, We've communicated some with people from Iowa and several other states, and um, I've actually enjoyed, I'm sorry, I actually invited them down if they're in this area to stop in and see us. So it, um, I think it's been very good for us. And there's also, um, because of that contest, uh, that grant awarding, it um, brought to knowledge, uh, brought to light about another grant that uh, hopefully I'll be talking about in the very near future that will um, also bring us some more uh, funding to spend in our parks and that is one thing about the two grants that I have found or that we have found not I but we have found is that they are park oriented and um, but we are still looking um, several months ago I did create a also a a uh, grant writing committee that's uh, headed up by Michael Whaley uh, uh, Michael Whaley from the fire department but anyway he um, we have several department heads working on that plus than the previous report that I talked about. So we actually have two different groups looking for grants and hopefully be as successful uh, with, the, with the rest of them as this last one was. Any other questions or comments from the mayor? I can talk some more if you want me to. You'll get another shot at it at the end of May. <laughs> Mr. Mosley, would you come give us a uh, report on the status of the city's finances, please? Absolutely. I provided everyone with the uh, financial reports that are in front of you. The first report, uh, as usual, is the revenue report for the month of June. Um, you will see uh, it's pretty consistent with what's been going on the last several months. Um, you'll see that it's on the budget total, we are 76.32% through the year, and most of those accounts um, I mean, I'm sorry, they're, the budget, they're budgeted. We've received 76.32% of what we have budgeted, and we're 66.67% through the year. So we're ahead of where we should be at this point. Um, most everything is running pretty, uh, pretty good. As you'll know, sales tax is right there on the cusp of where it should be. Um, lodging taxes are down, as I've mentioned before. Um, in these meetings, it's it's not down far, but it is down a little bit below where we should be at this point. Um, but most everything else is hanging in there where it should be or uh, or higher. The next sheet you'll see is the tax breakdown comparison for the month of June. Um, this is the report that I send out every month at the beginning of the month when, we, when I get the sales tax numbers. Uh, you'll notice that overall the organic difference is 33,806.03 um, less than last year. Actual is 21,229.82 less. And if you'll remember, June was the first month that we received um, the 1% additional. So it's, it's more of apples to apples now. Uh, the next set of sheets is the expense report for the month of June. Uh, you'll see that is you know 75 percent through the year on those, and as you look through those, most all of the departments are below budget, meaning they've spent less than where they should have if they were actually going spending all of their money, uh, which is a very good thing. Me means that they're being very conscious of their budgets and only spending what what they have to. Um, and if you look at total, 
you'll see that we are at 63% through our budget and we're 75% through the year. So both on the revenue side and the expenditure side, it's uh, r really good news. Uh, the next two sheets you'll see are the enterprise fund income statements for the month of June. You'll see that both of those are still running in the black. Um, we had been waiting on some grant, re uh, grant revenue to come back on the wastewater department. That money has started coming back. Uh, we've received about $150,000 back. Um, so that's gone back into that enterprise fund um, to continue to operate. Um, also, a couple of things of interest. Uh, accounts payable is still less than 30 days on all vendors. Uh, the group health account, uh, as I rep uh, reported last time, we owed two months, May and June. May has been paid, um, but we still owe for June and July. Um, my goal is to have it completely caught up by the end of the fiscal year uh, so we can end the year you know, on an even kill. Um, I know this is probably on a lot of people's mind, being that November is not that far away. Um, for the debt service payment, the large debt service payment that's due in November. Uh, we currently have $1.6 million in our debt service reserve account set aside. Uh, we're putting $500,000 aside every month uh, to fund that payment in November, and we're well on track to make that. That's it. Any questions for Mr. Mosley? Just one, Mr. Chair. When you say to make debt, Mr. that total amount would be... It's just, uh, it's approximately $3 million. I can't remember the exact. I think it's $2.9 million. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Mosley? Thank you, sir. Very good report. I always like to keep it positive. We'll move into Council Special Committee reports. Councilor Strippen, do you have a report? <coughs> Councilor Wood? No. Councilor Brown? No, sir. Councilor Miller? No. Councilor Bowes? No, sir. Councilor Fink? No, sir. Finance Committee met, met yesterday, and we uh, are recommended the, recommending the approval of all three items on this agenda. That being said, we'll move into the agenda items. First item is a resolution to appoint the Honorable Alfred Q. Booth to deliver voters' list to the city clerk. Councillor Fink, will you introduce this resolution, please? Yes, sir. Um, whereas sections 11-46-36 and 11-46-37, Code of Alabama 1975 as amended mandates that the list of qualified voters be delivered to the city clerk's office by an impartial or disinterested party. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Prattville that Honorable Alfred Q. Booth is hereby appointed to serve in that capacity. So moved, Mr. President. Councilor Fink has moved this resolution for adoption. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Bowes. Is there any discussion about this proposed resolution? All those in favor of adopting this resolution signify by raising your right hand. Any opposition by like signs saying none, the resolution is adopted. Next item is a resolution to authorize the hiring of one firefighter for the fire department at an annual cost not to exceed $51,970. Councilor Miller, will you introduce this resolution, please? Yes. Whereas the City of Prattville Fire Department has a need to hire one firefighter due to a recent resignation in that department, and whereas the City Council of the City of Prattville has implemented a hiring freeze, and whereas the annual cost of such employee will not exceed $51,970 for salary and benefits, now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that up to $51,970 is hereby authorized to be expended for the purpose of hiring one firefighter, and said funds are hereby approved and appropriated from fiscal year 2012 budget line items, fire department slash salaries and wages, workman's compensation, retirement, group health insurance, group life insurance, and FICA. Be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that the Human Resources Department is authorized to implement the hiring process as budgeted. Mr. President, I so move. Councilor, <clears throat> Councilor Miller has moved this resolution for adoption. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Strippen. Any discussion about this proposed resolution? Councilor Miller. This um, 
issue was brought to my attention by Chief and um, Dallas Johnson, and it uh, just happened, as you know, about a week or so ago. I'm sorry that I'm sort of losing track of time. These last couple of weeks have been real hectic for me. But I didn't have time to pull together a fire committee, and I think you remember we sent an email to sort of uh, explain it, one that was really well written by um, Dallas. And so I support this, and I understand the Finance Committee, as you said earlier, likewise does, but it really gets at maintaining adequate staffing in our fire department. So I encourage everyone to um, consider supporting this. Thank you, Councilor Miller. Miller any other comments? Councilor Bowes? Uh, Chief, I have you for a second. Um, the wages and benefits, salaries and benefits, that's enough to cover somebody if we can find, does that help where we can find somebody who's already trained and has their paramedic license? That salary covers a firefighter, medic. And how much does it cost if we fire, hire somebody green and have to train them? Off the top of my head, I didn't pull it. I mean, we can go online and look right fast. Uh, Just ballpark it. Uh, several thousand dollars because I have to pay them, I have to send them to school. Uh, and there's several people out there already certified. And a lot of a lot of these young men are going on their own now, right. getting the certification because they can self sponsor themselves through the school, and it's more attractive to cities not have to put all that money out for them. Plus, my need is to hire a medic. Good. You know, I'm so, losing medics. So this will be enough money to fund that need. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments pertaining to this proposed resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting this resolution signify by raising your right hand. Any opposition by like signs? Seeing none, the resolution is approved and adopted. Last item on the agenda is a resolution to authorize the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Otago County to lease Automark handicap voting machines for use in the 2012 municipal elections. Councilor Strippen, will you introduce this resolution, please? Yes, sir. Whereas the City of Prattville 2012 municipal elections will be held on August the 28th, 2012, and on October 9th, 2012, in the event of a runoff, and whereas Otago County owns the auto mark handicap voting machines that are used in these elections, and whereas Otago County agrees to lease these voting machines to the City of Prattville during its election at zero cost. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville that the Mayor is hereby authorized to enter into the agreement with the Otago County as attached to lease the Automark Handicap Voting Machines for use in the 2012 municipal elections and such agreement is hereby ratified and affirmed. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Strippen has moved this resolution for adoption. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Brown. Is there any questions or comments pertain pertaining to this proposed resolution? All those in favor of adopting this resolution, signify by raising your right hand. Any opposition by like signs, seeing none. Resolution is approved and adopted. That exhausts our regular agenda. Is there any agenda items to come from the floor tonight? Okay, we will open the floor up to the public to address the council on any item of business pertaining to our city this evening. Anyone like to address the council? Mrs. Boone. Orley Boone, 210 Phone Lane, Prattville, 36067. Good Quick evening. question about uh, resolution number two. The money that you just authorized to hire a new fireman, will this be matching what the person who resigned made, or is this in addition to what they made before? And we may need to. I'll defer to uh, Mrs. Thrash on this. I have an answer, but you'd rather hear it from her anyway. This will actually be lower than the leave than the um, firefighter that's leaving. That person was at a step three or four, and this is the entry level pay grade plus medic pay. Okay. Thank you. That answers my question. For those that don't know, Ms. Mrs. Thrash is our HR director. Yes, sir. You're next. State your name and your address, please. 
My name is John Wiggins, address 214 Magnolia Drive, and I've been living in Pratt for seven years, and I've been become very proud to be a Pratt Villian. So, uh, but in, in moving here, I bought a home over Camilla, Camilla Estates, and all the properties around there were rental, but mine, once I bought it. Now, on one side of the street, there's five in a row that's privately owned. There, on my side, there's about seven privately owned, and it's turning back into our owner community. And, and it really helps appearance. Well, I'm, I'm here to complain about uh, uh, an, a street over from me which affects me in more ways than one, and that has to do with abandoned vehicles. Uh, you, the ordinance that the city of Prattville has, it has it broke down in two parts. And one of them is abandoned uh, non-operating vehicle on private property, and the other one is abandoned non-operating vehicles on a roadway. Well, I want to address both parts of that with my complaint that I filed four months ago. Uh, it, it, it goes on the planning department deals with non-operating vehicles on privately, private property by issuing the owner a 10-day notice to remove the vehicle or to make the vehicle operable. That's on the property. If the vehicle is not made operable or removed within the 10 days, an arrest warrant is issued so that the individual will appear in court. Uh, the second part is at the same address, there was a van that had been parked in the street for months, not moved, but after they received the letter, it got pulled around and it's up under the oak tree, parked in a way that you can't see the tag on it to get by the ordinance. But on the uh, non-operating, this was a, a black SUV. It had been sitting on blocks for months, no wheels, no hubs, just axles showing. After they got the request from the city, they went in and they took a torch and they cut it up. Part of it was probably sent to the junkyard, but along the house there's body parts. On the driveway there's four blocks. There's a there's a uh, framing for the vehicle. There's a motor transmission. All these things are there just like a used car lot. So they they have uh, appeared to be working around it because it, it's no longer a vehicle. But when the complaint was filed, it was a legitimate vehicle. So uh, I, I sent uh, Carl Wilson an email today. I filed the first complaint through the uh, computer four and a half months ago. I sent him, a, uh, Councilman Woods, a part, uh, they sued him a copy. And uh, I'm not getting uh, a lot of response because I've had seven interactions back and forth between them. I know nothing about where it's at, and my daughter and her husband has accepted a five-year missionary appointment in Zambia, Africa. And we're selling the house, which is down the street on Camellia Wood Court, which is a much nicer part of the neighborhood than what you got to go through to get there. This is going to affect that. If they don't sell it, we're going to try putting it through the Maxwell Rental. But airmen coming in, they're not going to want to go down there and live back down in those woods no matter how nice a house is. So I have two I consider legitimate reasons. The community we're in, we're trying to bring it back up to the standards of a nice community, not rental property where everybody is to themselves, but all of us know each other up and down the street, and we interact. But you can only do that because if it's privately owned because the people come and go, and a lot of them have attitudes that they don't want to be a part of the community, and we have to live with that. So that's what I'm bringing before you tonight. Uh, is a, is a uh, follow-up of a complaint that I'd like to be kept up to date on it because this is something that um, involves me personally. And like I say, I've been here seven years. I love travel. It's good to be a pavilion where there's football, where there's uh, opportunities in the community, uh, what we have as far as the parks and what's coming up. It's a great place, and I'd like to see it become greater in my area as well as yours. Well, sir, first of all, let me commend you and your neighbors for revitalizing your neighborhood. That's outstanding. Uh, that would set an example that we could all emulate. Now, your council person is Councilor Wood, right? Yeah, he's, he's, and we've, he, we've communicated back and forth, and he sent me an email today, and I told him I would be here tonight. So. Okay. Councilor Wood, would you like to address this, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, Mr. Wiggins, thank you for taking time to come down. You can, you, can, you can have a seat now. I would just like to say that he has been doing this for several months. I've also talked to the planning director, and 
made him aware, has given him the address and the copy. And I want to assure him that whatever codes are being violated, I hope that the planning department will have corrected, sent a written report, uh, Joel, if you will, not only to Mr. Wiggins, but also to me so that we both can stay abreast of what's going on. I assure you we want to keep the community looking good. I see your hand going up, Mayor. Mayor, did you want to be recognized on this one? When, when Council Wood finishes, we'll recognize yeah, you. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I see his hand flat. I, I make me forget what I want to say. I'm finished. Thank you, Mr. Wade. Mayor, you want to wade in on this? Yes, sir. And, and I also want to say thank you for coming down. I have been by and I've seen, I have seen exactly firsthand what you're talking about, and we have been in communication uh, with uh, with that department, and if you will give me your phone number, uh, even though I've, I have your email, I would like to, uh, okay, and I will uh, call you, and we'll uh, this I will assure you that the the this is in motion, and the next step is uh, is uh, anyway, it just takes time, so you you will be in contact, and we'll try to give you a timeline on when it will how long much longer it will take. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the council on any item of business? Mr. Reinhardt, come forward, please, and give us your name and address. Good evening. Tom Reinhardt, Jr., 107 Deer Trace. Yes, sir. What can we do for you tonight? Well, I'd just like to address the council and all gathered here including the mayor with a compliment so I hope you will be patient with me if I become a little long-winded but I think perhaps you may be interested I've lived here in Prattville or the Prattville area for approximately 40 years it's been an enjoyable experience over the past 40 years I've had the pleasure of experiencing the police department here in Prattville and all the officers that worked for the police department over the past 40 years. I've met them on several occasions in different places for whatever the reason. And I must say that it's always been a pleasurable experience. Our police, whoever they may have been, over the years have always been kind, courteous, pleasant, friendly, and professional. Now, how they reconciled all of these virtues, I don't know, but they did. And I'd like to tell everybody, including the mayor and Chief Huggins, sadly, I cannot say this about any other law enforcement agency I've ever met, just Prattville. I have never met a Prattville police officer from the top down that I didn't enjoy meeting. It's a pleasure. Prattville, the city of Prattville, can be proud of their police department. Very proud. And I implore all of you, at one point or another, sooner, better than later, to commend our officers in uniform and let them know how much that you appreciate them for the job well done. Give them the gratitude they deserve. And in closing, I'm not going to leave out another very special group of people that works for us, and that's our fire department, too. I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot of our firefighters, and they, too, are just as special as our policemen. Every time I've come across a firefighter, it's been a very pleasant experience. I've never had a bad one. What else can you say about that? Prattville's got a lot to be proud of. Now, I don't know who else has addressed the city council about our public servants. I don't know what they've said, good or bad. But you can take what I've told you to heart. We've got a lot to be proud of. We have the best. Mayor, Chief, <laughs> you can be proud of your people. Thank them for the job well done. 
Thank you, Mr. Reinhardt. Any comments or questions for Mr. Reinhardt? Councilor Bowles. I want to say thank you. My brother is on the police department. <clears throat> We're twins, so if you ever get pulled over, it's not me. But I do appreciate it, and they mean an awful lot to everybody up here and, and to the community. That's what makes that's what sets Prattville apart. If you get pulled over, I know one time, I hate to brag on my brother, but I will go ahead and say it. He pulled over a um, guy at the Air War College, a colonel, gave him a ticket, looked down, he had a flat tire. He changed his tire for him because he didn't want him to be late for work. He said it's the first time he ever got a raving recommendation after giving somebody a ticket. And that's what sets people apart in Prattville is the is our employees from the, the guys picking up the, the garbage to the motorcycle policemen to the guys riding the back of the fire truck. So we have the top of the top for employees. Well, I, I have two very close friends that are practical police. The, the fellow, I think of him as the brother I've always wanted but never had. And the young lady I think of as his sister. I can't think of any, any finer people. And that's saying a lot. Any other questions or comments of Mr. Reinhardt, Mayor? Yes, I just want to uh, say thank you. I, I'm very proud that uh, over the last almost eight years that I've been able to get to know the vast majority of the city employees, and um, uh, they are they have made Prattville proud, and um, it is the people of Prattville that make Prattville, and I think we are a special community, and thank you for coming down and sharing that with us. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Reinhardt. <clears throat> Would anyone else like to address the council on any item of business this evening? Yes, sir. Please come to the mic. Give us your name and your address, please. Richard Minnick, 105 Asbury Drive. Yes, sir. What can we do for you tonight? So I was up here a few uh, city council meetings ago and was bringing up some of the details on the budget that we had on the website and stuff, and some things have been addressed and I really appreciate that uh, just some things I did note that would help uh, on the side is when they post it online to the web page it'd be great if we knew what the date of it actually was you, if you hover over the links you know by the date of the file what it is but we don't really have a date in here it would also be helpful if we had what the original budget is and the amendments so that we can see every bit of it only thing you see right now is the latest that's it so that would, that would help greatly. Uh, another thing is, is, you know, in order to get a delta, and I talked about this before, what was the original budget or what was the amendment, but amended budget, what is it now? You have to physically go in there and do all the math yourself. Mm -hmm. So it'd be great if they were tracking that. You know, here's what the mayor puts out, the approved budget from last year, the approved budget this year. If there was a difference, as you've seen here, you know, I went through from the last amended budget to this amended budget, uh, we went up 29.5 in our revenue, but our expenditures went up 42.5. Little details like that start to become significant. So like when Ms. Boone's up here and she's asking questions of where this money's coming from, that kind of stuff, it just gives us a better picture if some of that information can be uh, available. And I, I think it's really good. Uh, I think we're seeing a lot of the citizens now trying to be involved in um, minding the shop uh, all across the board. And I think that's great. It shows the, the involvement and uh, the willingness to uh, get up in front of the council and have that uh, ability. But uh, I appreciate it. If there's any questions. Thank you for your input and your help. Thank you. Any questions? Mayor? Yes, thank you for coming down. And I do agree with you. There's a lot more, um, uh, I don't know about watching the shop, but there's a lot of uh, concerned citizens and interested citizens out there. And, and I do applaud them for that. And I think we have made some great strides over the years. One was getting uh, just different items on the website. Absolutely. Uh, I have worked with uh, talking with our finance director about trying to either highlight or show some comparisons there. And then hopefully over the next budget cycle, we should have, have that corrected. Right. The, the raw budget obviously is coming out of a system that's not going to let you do that kind of manipulation, which is great. But even spreadsheet or some other document that shows what the deltas are and the changes, you know, that just makes it a lot easier. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the council on any item of business this evening? Okay, Mayor, you have any closing comments? Uh, yes, sir. The um, August the 20th is when most everybody's going to be going back to school. 
Uh, that's when most schools are open back up. Well, August 18th, we're going to be having a back to school event in uh, Pratt Park. Just want to go ahead and get a little bug in everybody's ear. You'll start seeing some information popping up, um, uh, similar to how the 4th of July was um, advertised. But besides that, I do want to say thank you, gentlemen, for the and ladies, lady, for the hard work that you guys have done over the past um, years with me. And um, I look forward to several more years with each and every one of you guys. But uh, as we do go into our political um, campaigning mode, uh, wish each and every one good luck that uh, has qualified. Uh, there again, be careful with the heat. Make certain you stay hydrated because we definitely... We're, I think everybody loves our fire department. We do not want to have to call them out to uh, resuscitate a candidate. So, but besides that, have a good evening. Councilor Strickland. Yes, sir. Just a few items. Thank you, Mr. Reinhardt, for your comments. They are certainly appreciated. Also, express appreciation to all the staff that were involved in the Fourth of July events. It was a long day, but it was a very enjoyable day. I also. Um, express appreciation to all of those that were involved in the splash pad voting and the leadership that the city gave in that area. It was a great spirit builder for our community and I've heard a lot of very positive comments about that. Last item is I think this will be my last public opportunity to express appreciation to Mr. Ken Johnson uh, for his efforts in beautifying Prattville. I appreciate that. Thank you. Councilor Wood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank everyone for what they do in the city of Prep, all employees. Everyone does a fine job. Uh, I've had the opportunity, by the grace of God, to be here for many years. I came in with black hair, and uh, it's slightly gray now. I thank him for that. Uh, we still have a long way to go. We still have a lot of trials. We still have a lot of uh, things to deal with. But if we all continue to work together, and as I always say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, whoever is up here, if you agree to disagree and respect each other, I think we can continue to do things if you will agree to disagree. And I just want to urge you to do that, whoever is here in this office. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilor Brown. There will be a streets committee meeting on Tuesday, July 24th at 3 p.m. in the City Hall Annex. If everybody can come. Councilor Miller. Now, I also want to thank Mr. Reinhardt for coming down and um, saying those words that it was not only kind, but I think that it means a lot to city employees and staff when they get recognized um, in such a positive way. So thank you for doing that. I wanted to, I guess, say a little bit of personal stuff. I had shared with most of you, I think, or all of you. Again, it's been real hectic, but I didn't know if I was going to be here tonight because my wife had surgery this morning. and. I was up at Baptist Surgical Suite from 5 this morning until a little after 2, so I'm glad to report that she did well and uh, went home same-day surgery, and, you know, the final stuff will come with the further studies on the tissue that you removed. It was a thyroid issue, but everything is looking as good as it can right now and probably will continue to look that way, so I appreciate the folks that um, had her and me in your thoughts and prayers, and I'm glad to report that she is doing well. Councilor Bowes. Uh, yes, I want to start off by saying thanks to the city employees for the perfect way 4th of July went off. Absolutely great from the beginning to the end. It was just fantastic. But I want to give a special thanks to several people tonight, first starting with Mark Rhodes. He, um, for the 4th of July and again Sunday for the splash pad, cooked hot dogs, worked out in the heat. It was hot. Let me tell you, it was hot. And um, Mark, I don't know if y'all know him. You need to get to know him. He's a fireman. He's also over our, um, the president of the union here, and he does a lot of extras above and beyond. I appreciate that, Mark. Thank you very much. Um, a special thanks to Teresa Lee, Kelly Cook, and to Drew. The splash pad would have never happened without you guys. I know it, and I really appreciate all three of y'all, the extra effort, the countless hours that you did off the clock at home, putting the, the events together. And I really think the thing about the splash pad is I haven't seen this community drawn together like this since the tornado. 
And it has been a very special thing to be a part of. And I really appreciate y'all's extra effort and extra work. Thank you. Councilor Frank? I guess just to give Mark a little hard time, I had one of those hot dogs. I'm not sure they were cooked. They might have been burned, but uh, you did a good job with that. But, uh, Mr. Reinhardt, thank you as well. It's it's uh, all too often we, we oftentimes don't hear the positive sometimes. It's it's oftentimes the negative that, that gets conveyed to us and the employees as well. So thank you for taking the time to come with a positive message as well. Thank you. Being the last one to speak, usually it's all been said. But I will say this, that the citizens that I have spoken with, including Mr. Tom Reinhardt, Jr., are all very impressed with the extra effort that each and every employee of this city is expending each and every day. And I'm proud of all of you. And I encourage Mr. Reinhardt to come and share his sentiments tonight. And thank you, Tom, for doing that. That being said, the next city council meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, August the 7th, 2012, at 6 p.m. right here in the council chambers. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a motion? So motion by Councilor Fink. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We are adjourned.